Welcome to AWS. This is the AWS Wednesday at Sticks show. So some Wednesdays, I will publish AWS tutorial videos, which can be related to cloud security, AWS cloud connectivity, application security running in AWS, AWS networking, and many others. In this first episode, we will just create a free EC2 web application. And it's not just a web application. It's a vulnerable web application written in Python Django. We will use this website in our web application hacking and web application firewall tutorials. So let's begin. I am here at EC2 console home and we will just create our EC2 instance. So let's just verify first. So we have zero instances running and all we need to do is click instances under instances. And uh, as you can see, there's still no instances. I need to just click this icon, this button here, launch instance, and this will take us to launch an instance page. I will just name our first instance sticks blog one and under application and OSI image or AMI, I will just select by default, we have Amazon Linux, but we want to select Ubuntu because our web application is designed in Ubuntu Linux. And as you can see, the AMI version is Ubuntu Server 22.04 LTS. It's a free tier eligible. And as we scroll down, we will select instance type. We'll just leave the default T2 micro because it's also free tier eligible. Under key pair, I actually already have a key pair named Sticks, So we're going to use this in order for us to easily access our EC2 via SSH. And then under network settings, we're just going to leave our VPC by default. And under firewall or security group, I will just select the default, which is create security group. So when we select this and after it create an instance, it will create a security group called launch wizard dash one. And this will also allow inbound SSH traffic from anywhere, which is the internet. And uh, I think this is it, we're done. All we need to do is cl click launch instance. And in few seconds, there you go. Our instances or our instance has been successfully created. I will just click this link or click view all instances down here. And as you can see, oh, this is a typo. It should be sticks blog. Let me correct this so it's easy to rename it all we need to do is just click this pencil icon and now we have a new name or we have successfully renamed our ec2 to sticks blog one okay and the reason why we added one because maybe later we are gonna add the second third sticks blog and uh, okay the instance state is now running now it's time to connect it via putty via SSH. So to do that, let's just first copy this IP address, paste it. And uh, under SSH, I'm going to click off and I'm going to select sticks.ppk. This is our public key. And I'm going to click open. Before I do that, I will just change the font style to bold and the size to 14. I'm going to click open. I'm going to click accept and I will enter our username Ubuntu. And there you go. We are now successfully authenticated. We didn't need to um, type and enter the password because we use the public key name sticks. So now we are in our Ubuntu Linux. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to install our web application, okay? Our vulnerable web application. And to do this, we will just simply clone my Git repository. And as you can see, my Git repository is uh, from the URL github.com slash dinarmada and the repository name is awssec.git. So it has successfully cloned the files in my repository. If I do ls, as you can see, we have a directory named awssec, which is the name of our repository. And if I change my directory or CD to AWS sec, let's verify the files. We have two directories. 
cloud audit and hacksite.ci and we also have a test file.txt now what we're interested more is the hacksite.ci because this is where we will install our web application so we'll be using docker compose so we'll use sudo docker space space compose um dash up dash d and as you can see um it says docker compose command not found because we still don't have the tool docker compose installed so what i'm gonna do is I'm going to install the Docker Compose tool, but before that, we'll just going to update our Linux um, OS, our instance. So I use sudo apt update, and in a few seconds, we'll successfully update our operating system. Now it's done. And uh, the next thing is I'm going to install Docker Compose. Let me respond with Y or yes, and this will continue installing our tool Docker Compose. All right, now the Docker Compose is uh, successfully installed. The, the next thing that I'm going to do is I will go to hack site Django directory, this directory, because I want to change the authorization or the rights, the privileged rights to this file, entrypoint.sh. .sh, this is a bash script. And as you can see, there is no executable, uh, uh, executable privilege in any group. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the user to have an execution privilege. So there are many different ways to change the uh, privilege, but I will just use U plus X. And what will happen is it will add uh, executable rights here. So chmod u plus x and the name of the file, entrypoint.sh. If I rerun ls-l, as you can see, we have now x, which means we can successfully execute this file. Now, next thing that I'm going to do is I will go to this directory, hacksite django db Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do next is I will remove... Uh, some of the files the dot keep dot files now i'm gonna just copy and paste and what we have here is you see that it says remove this file dot git keep to various directories why do we need to remove this well as you can see git or github it cannot accept empty directory but these directories are very important in PG. PG stands for Postgres, which is our database. So we need to add this .git keep file. It's a hidden file. It's very important because it allows us to upload um, empty directories to Git. But this will not work if we still keep this file. That's why we need to remove it. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to this directory where docker-compose is uh, residing now what i'm going to do next is i'm going to do sudo docker compose up dash d and this will install our web application now while waiting let's go to our website um to our web browser and let me open this IP address. Okay. Now we're trying to open it, but it's still not available. Okay. Um, as you can see, the web application is still downloading. The image is downloading and uh, it's still in the process of installing this web application. But while waiting, what I'm going to do is we're going to do some testing. Okay. So it's still not accessible from our web browser. Now, there are things that we need to verify first. First, we have security group. If I go to security tab, we'll see there's a security group named uh, launch-wizard-1. 
and if I click this security group which is automatically created as you can see there's there is only one permission entry if I click this security group ID again you will see that there's only one rule it's an inbound rule allowing SSH connection as you can see the type is SSH listening on TCP port 22 so how can we access a web application if the only traffic allowed is SSH of course we need to edit this we need to add HTTP traffic Okay, so it's listening to port 80 and uh, we will allow traffic from the internet so the quad zero slash zero is enough i'm gonna click save rules okay now let's verify okay uh let's do this sudo docker ps okay and uh, as you can see there are two containers running the Postgres and the Django, and both of them are running since a minute ago. Okay, now let's verify. If I refresh this, the web application is still not accessible. And uh, let's access our, or let's view our um, EC2 again, our Ubuntu Linux. As you can see, our web application is listening on not port 80, but port 8000. Okay. And what if we change this URL instead of using the default TCP port 80, we're going to use port 8000. As you can see, it's still not accessible. And why? Maybe we need to allow an inbound rule instead of port 80. I'm going to add a custom one, 8000. And then sourcing, all zero or all um, traffic so it should be quad zero slash zero and there you go now we can access our web application which is stick show blog site wonder why we are using tcp port 8000 and can we do something about it well here in aws of course we can so in the next video we're gonna activate and use AWS ELB or AWS Elastic Load Balancer.